Hello and welcome to our question and answer session. A number of questions have been submitted to us and thank you for those. Uh, some really good questions as well. What I've done is selected a number of questions that I believe are pertinent to a number of families. Um, a number of questions were quite individual and what we'll do with those is reply to those via email on an individual basis. So I've got a nice selection here of questions that I feel um, a number of families will benefit from knowing the answers to. So first of all, the first question is, uh, what supports and strategies do you have in place for students with additional needs? Well, the answer to that question is we've got extensive support here. There is a notion at times that grammar schools uh, don't support students with additional needs. That is not the case here at Coldy Grange Grammar School. I can assure you of that. We have an excellent pastoral system and uh, as part of that, an excellent learning support department as well. We do work with the local authority if required. So, for example, if extra funding is needed to support a student in school, we're very proactive in doing that and have very good relations with the local authority in moving those situations forward. We have extensive staff training in meeting additional needs in school, whatever that need may be, and there are many of them, as you are aware, um, and our training does address that. We also uh, share good practice amongst staff um, about dealing um, with um, certain issues that students may have in school, and that is all um, good for the school moving forward and good for the students in terms of keeping staff up to date with current practice. But it's also an area, I would stress, where partnership with parents and carers is really important. Sometimes students do have um, some quite acute needs in school, whether it be behavioural, whether it be a specific learning need. And the best way of dealing with that is through close contact with the home. And that is something that we will always um, try and stress in school. Second question about bullying policy, a common one, this one, in all schools, uh, parents asking about the nature of this. How do we enforce our bullying policy in school? Well, what I would say to that one is, first of all, early on, we make it very, very clear to parents that, um, and students, obviously, that we, we do have a good bu a bullying policy in place, and also that we rigorously enforce it. We do try to foster a culture here at Caldy Grange of relaying those concerns. So if a child feels they're being bullied or parents, carers feel that, please inform us. We cannot act without being informed about it. So it's really important that people do inform us about this first of all. We also do a lot of work across the school, whether it be in assemblies, in lessons, in PHSE as well. Um, about accepting difference and making our young people tolerant. Being tolerant is one of the key virtues in this school and it's something we really do push at all levels. So basically what we do is we come at bullying from different angles. There never is one angle really uh, to tackle this. It is human behaviour unfortunately. Um, I would be... Um, I'll be being disingenuous to you if I said there was no bullying at this school. Of course, it is human nature, as I was saying before. The key thing is that it's addressed and it is also dealt with as well. And we do deal with it. So, for example, not only do we encourage the victims to come forward, we also support them as well. We do whatever we can to support those people in school, but we also take action against people who are the perpetrators of bullying. And that includes exclusion from school. So I'll make that clear that we take a very strong line against bullying. To me, it is absolutely unacceptable and it's something I will not tolerate in this school. Question about GCSE options on a different uh, note here. Um, there's a question, how many options do people take and what is compulsory and when do they take these options? So first of all, options are taken in year eight. We do a three-year GCSE here at Caldy Grange. We've done that for a few years now, and we feel this really helps students um, to embrace GCSE studies and also maximise their achievement at the end of year 11. They choose 10 GCSE subjects. I'll, I'll tell you those, those subjects here. Um, they do English lang language and literature, mathematics, biology, chemistry and physics, so triple science, uh, modern foreign language, history or geography, and then two options. We have a number of options. Usually students choose an additional language. 
um, and either history or geography. Um, so you could do both actually, history and geography. But we've also got a whole suite of other options in technology, uh, computer science, uh, drama, fine art, music, PE, religious studies. And as I was saying before about technology, all the design elements in there as well. So various design and technology subjects. Uh, that is what students can choose. They also, in addition, have timetable lessons in PHSE, RE and PE as well, in core PE that is. So we have a wide range of options um, at the school. Next question, what support is available for students with dyspraxia and people who are lacking confidence therefore when they take part in sport? Well, going back to our pastoral support I was talking about before, we really do try and foster um, confidence among students in this school. And that is a really important thing to do. So throughout the school, from year seven onwards, we try and build our students up. And many students will tell you who've been through this school, what a difference Caldy Grange has made to their own personality and how it's brought them out of their selves and developed their confidence. So number one, we develop confidence across the board, not just in sport. As I was saying before about other needs in school, teachers are trained and we're always looking at ways to encourage participation and you know, improve people in those sports. So that is something that we will do. We'll always embrace um, extra training. We'll always look at ways we can do things better. So we really do try and address those needs at source. A question about free school meal support. Basically, um, we do offer extensive support for students on free school meals. So for example, we can offer um, subsidised travel to the school and also uh, uniform as well, help with them purchasing uniform. This is a monitored group in the school. We do um, pay special attention and monitor these students. And we also put a number of other uh, strategies into place to help these students succeed as they go through the school. And that can include, for example, access to extra tuition and also extra intervention to help students to achieve their potential. So we have a range of strategies there would be the answer to that question. Moving on, how much homework do you get? Basically, every night a student can expect to get between an hour and one and a half hours of homework per evening. What we say to every subject is to set a substantive homework every week. So in every subject, whether it be maths or whether it be history, for example, there would be usually one homework per week in those subjects. How do you communicate with parents? We do this in a number of ways. For example, we use the Edulink app. That is quite a recent development, but I know from parent feedback, they really appreciate this. That channels all of our communication. So for example, it may be that we send out letters to you that way, or reports, um, progress data, etc., about your child. That will go through something called Edulink. And when your child joins the school, you will get access to Edulink. And as I was saying, we have had very positive feedback about that. There is a weekly head teacher communication from me. So we have a newsletter that we send out every two weeks. I contribute to that. But outside of that, I also send communication home to parents. So at least once a week, you will have substantive communication through me and from the school generally. We also do Google surveys for parents. And that's a way of us listening to you and trying to get feedback from you about how we can improve the school further. It's always an area we're trying to develop in terms of communication. We're a big school and it's something, as I was saying, we're always trying to improve on. Do you allow students to use mobile phones? Now, we do have a strict line on mobile phones in the school. Mobile phones can be a distraction from learning and also a safeguarding issue because we do not know as staff in the school, what students are sending to each other when they're using mobile phones um, if they are not being monitored. That said, we do realise mobile phones can be an asset in the classroom. And therefore, if the staff are supervising an activity, for example, an online quiz that is done from a mobile phone, mobile phones can be used to aid learning in the classroom. Not around the school site, though. We do have a strict line around the school 
where we don't allow uh, students to use mobile phones in corridors, at break time, at lunch time, unless they are being supervised. And that is for safeguarding grounds, um, fundamentally. And we expect your support as parents and carers on that matter. And please, I would add, do not contact your child during the school day. Send any communication through the school office. Uh, messages are always relayed to students, so there's no need to use a mobile, uh, mobile device in that way. What if I disagree with the school on a disciplinary matter? Now, what I would say to that uh, question, then, the way I, I would respond is that we do discuss matters, of course, of concern with you. However, we do expect your support on disciplinary matters in the school. I must make that clear to you. And basically, the school's decision is final. So it may be that you disagree with the school's line um, on dealing with a particular issue. We will discuss it, as I was saying, but our line is final and we expect your support. That's the most effective way of going, uh, of working together um, in the interests of your child. That school and home work together um, and support each other on those issues. It's really important. I've been in schools now for over 20 years and that is one of the most effective ways of getting students to engage in school. It is when the home and school work together. I cannot stress that enough. And the final two questions, we were asked about class sizes. Class sizes do vary depending on the subject. Obviously, if it's a practical subject, it tends to be smaller groups of students, and that is for health and safety reasons. Generally speaking, class sizes can vary uh, between 25 and 30 in a group. In terms of form sizes, there's a question about um, how, many, sorry, how many forms we have in the school. We usually have seven forms. However, recently we've increased that to eight forms and that allows for smaller groups of students to then obviously receive more attention from the tutor and the teachers as well. I do thank you for those questions. I hope you found that informative. Please um, look out as well for any individual questions that you put into the school. We will respond to those via email, as I said earlier. Thank you very much for listening.